To eliminate with extreme prejudice was a term coined during the Vietnam War, but the term is equally applicable to the guns that we're talking about today on TFB TV. For today, we have the Well Rod and the Well Wand. Both were experimental and later adopted firearms in use by the Special Operations Executive, which was active during World War II. This was a, essentially a British spy organization that took the fight to the enemy in World War II, very similar to the American OSS. The operational requirements for the well rod and the well wand were that it have a great ease of concealment, it be very effective at short range, have extreme reliability, and essentially it have some sort of plausible deniability back to Britain. That way if a German or a Japanese soldier captured one of these weapons, they couldn't figure out that the weapon actually came from the United Kingdom and was in fact maybe from somewhere else. They couldn't at least prove it at the very least. So the well in these names is a prefix used by SOE to designate the origin of where they were researched and developed, which was Station 9. Now for those British listeners out there, I'm probably going to mess this up, but here goes. The particular building which these were created and researched and developed was the Frith at Wellwyn in Hertfordshire, otherwise known as Station 9 for SOE Research and Development. So the Wellwyn, the well part of that was used to designate the well rod, the well wand, the well gun, and a number of other uh, experiments that SOE used during the war. Now, both of these suppressed weapons were purely designed for assassinating German or Japanese individuals. Usually these were high-ranking you know, Gestapo officials or various commanders or high-ranking civilians that were operating in these countries during the war, in the occupied countries as well. The point of these assassinations was to try to stoke some sort of fear into the population, seeing their leaders getting capped left and right by, you know, suppressed small arms coming out of nowhere. These were also very short-range weapons in which both of them were used within somewhere of 20 to 5 meters, even less than a meter in, case, in the case of the well wand. So to get right into it, the well rod was developed in 1942 and it passed a number of trials very successfully and then in 1943 it was redesigned with an improved stock, a replaceable magazine, a spring ejector, a knurled knob, and a lighter trigger. At least 300 were part of the initial order, however we have some reports that it might have gone into the, at least the 20,000 mark for production values. The British government is pretty finicky about these sorts of things, not telling the official production numbers of these weapons as we've seen in the case with the Delisle from an earlier video. In addition, the well rod is rumored to have been in use by the SAS up until very recently, possibly even the 1990s or 2000s with some estimates as well. It wasn't only used in World War II, but it was also used in the Korean War. There was a documented version of it used in the Falklands War as well. Now the well rod was made in two different versions. There's a 32 ACP version and there's a 9mm version. The 32 ACP version had no trigger guard, it was 12 inches long, and it weighed about 35 ounces. One of the biggest differences between the 32 ACP and the 9mm version was that the 9mm version could have the suppressor portion unscrewed and taken off and you could use it as a regular handgun with it a manual recock in between rounds. The 9mm version was 14 inches long, it weighed 3 pounds and 4 ounces. Both of these well rods have actually had grip safeties as well. To load the well rod, you would load up a magazine and insert it into the firearm and this would essentially serve as the grip at the same time. Then all you would have to do is to cock it, you would take the knurled knob at the rear, turn it clockwise, bring it back and then bring it out and this would cock the gun. Then you would push it forward and you would turn it in. And there's a small safety on the side as well. If you turned it one way, you could have it off safe and then immediately put in it the other way, you could then use it. Now, the well wand, or otherwise known as the sleeve gun, was a very interesting contraption, and although similar to the well rod because it was suppressed, it had a very different operational usage. So essentially, with the well wand, it was first available in 22 long rifle, but then it was available in 32 ACP. It was 8 inches long and 1 inch in diameter. In addition, it weighed about 26 ounces. To operate 
the well wand, what you would do is you would unscrew the back and pop that off and then you would take a round and stick it in a slot which is at the back as well. Then you would take this entire contraption and screw it back in to the tube itself and then you would fire it by means of pushing a sort of nipple or a button at the end towards the muzzle and you would push this back after engaging a safety which was on the Mark II version. The Mark I's didn't have this safety. But you would take the trigger more or less between your hand and then you would press the trigger down and that would actuate a rod which would lead back to the chamber. And then this would actuate the actual round and it would be fired. Now bear in mind it had a little circular enclosure at the rear which was intended to be attached to a lanyard. The lanyard would be run down your arm, up a coat, and over the back of your neck and you would hold it with your left hand. The idea was to get as close as possible to your target and then to slowly let the well wand go with your left hand thereby dropping it into your right hand or vice versa if you're right or left. Then you would drop it into your right hand and now you'd have it ready to go. Presumably the well wand would be concealed in a jacket or a coat at the same time. You would walk right up to the target and you would take the well wand, put it to the head or maybe the chest of your target at something like less than a meter or perhaps even right on them as well, engage the safety, press the trigger, cap that German officer in the back of the head, slowly with your left hand bring the lanyard down and bring the well wand back up your sleeve and then slowly walk away as if nothing has happened. Both of these weapons, the well rod and the well wand, were used extensively during World War II. The well rod much more so than the well wand. We have recorded instances of Danish resistance groups using the well wand to capture various officials, bundle them up into a train and then execute them right there in the train and then leave Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate the viewership. And while you're at it, I'd really like to give a shout out to the National Firearms Center in Leeds, which really helped us film these historical pieces and bring these to light on TFB TV. In addition, I'd also like to thank one of our sponsors, Ventura Munitions. They provide quality ammunition at excellent prices, and they provide a lot of the ammunition that you see in our reviews. They really also help keep the channel going. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and remember to check your six. Yeah.